Hello there, Ray here. We have the very first mod that you can vote for for the Minecraft Live Event 2023 and then will be in the upcoming 1.21 Minecraft version. But before we look at what this mob all offers, let's first take a look at a leak that occurred less than one day ago. Now shortly after Minecraft came out with this video explaining how they will be coming out with the next three mobs over the next three days, there was a supposed leak of all three Minecraft mobs. The screenshot shows that the first mob that they'll release is going to be the seagull, the second one is the jellyfish, and the third would be the crab. This leak came in a form of a screenshot of the supposed playlist that the Minecraft live videos are being uploaded to. Now the official Minecraft YouTube page does have a playlist related to Minecraft Live 2023. If you click view playlist, this is what pops up. It shows the announcement trailer for Minecraft Live 2023. It also has the reminder video and it has the announcement to the mob vote video. But at the top it does say five unavailable videos are hidden. So these are videos that are in the playlist but they're set to private so you can't actually see them. It also says the playlist was just updated today. If you go over here and click show unavailable videos this is what pops up you can see there were some video that was privated and placed into the playlist first but then all the rest are in chronological order so that we could assume that this one here would be the first mob this would be the second mob they showcase and this would be the third mob that they showcase and this would be like a conclusion where they show all three and remind people to vote now the screenshot itself does have the little description title at the top here, just like the one that Minecraft has. Also, it says eight videos are total in Minecraft's playlist. And on here, we can't quite see it, but at the very top of the screenshot, it's partly cut off. You can see there's some digit in this word videos. So it could be the number eight there, or it could just be the number of three that got cut off. And since it only did show us three videos, it is a little bit suspicious as anybody could just made a playlist, uploaded three private videos, and then took a screenshot. They should took a screenshot of the three private videos plus the already pre-existing videos that are uploaded by Minecraft. We also can't see any scroll bar in this screenshot so we don't know how big this list is and we can't see these little numbers on the side. We don't know how many other ones there is in this playlist. The screenshot was also uploaded after they came out with this first video here. So we already knew that they're on a boat and they're going to go across the water and it's likely that they're going to come across mobs from the ocean, air, as well as islands. It just happens to be that all three mobs in their list are an air mob, a water mob, and an island mob. Which is exactly what I predicted. So double check that YouTube hasn't unsubscribed you as I use my over 14 years of playing Minecraft to let you know how the latest changes of the game are going to affect you. There's also been this leak that's come from China but there's supposedly going to be an update related to the aquatic. You can see like we have the dolphins and a lot of the different things that we recognize. But we also see there is actually sharks down here in the water. And there's some kind of like treasure floating in the water. I don't think this is a creature. There's also something back here on their player made ship. But China is known to have different updates than the main game. So let me know what you think about this. Now that you're caught up on the leaked information, let's take a look at this new video that Minecraft released on the very first mob that you get to vote for. Look! There's something on that beach over there. Could it be a new mob? Maybe it can help us get unlost. We're not lost. We're following my super secret shortcuts. So it starts out with them on the ship, just like we've seen in the previous video, and they're sailing to Minecraft live event, but they accidentally got lost, and now they're on this adventure where we're going to come across new mobs along the way. Little Voo spots a new mob off in the distance, and he mentions it's on a beach, just kind of like what I predicted in my previous video, where one of the mobs will be on land. Let's see who gets to live first! Oh, Tiny Voo has found a crab. One of the new mobs that wants to join Minecraft. That little Voo goes after it and he ends up on the edge of the water where there is the new mob, the crab. This matches up with the leaked information where they said there's going to be a crab, a jellyfish, and a seagull. It lives in mangrove swamps, like this one. The crab's claw is very handy for players that like building. <laughs> Yes, uh, because crab claws allow players to place blocks further away. And it sounds like the crab, besides being cute, will actually have a use as the player will be able to use the crab's claw to reach further when placing blocks. It probably also applies to breaking blocks, but where would the player actually hold this? Maybe they would have to hold it in their offhand slot in order for it to work, as it's unlikely for the player to like wear this on their head or any other body or armor piece. 
This is very different than we see with other items. I can't think of other items that the player would have like on their offhand. All of a sudden we'll give them a special ability without them actually like using it in their main hand. This is kind of like a passive effect and we really haven't had this in the game. So it's unlikely how they're going to pull this off, but it would be really cool. Now typically in survival, when it comes to breaking blocks, you can break one block, two blocks, three blocks, four blocks, and five blocks, but that's just kind of the hard limit in which player can actually go out and break blocks. And the same goes when placing in block. Now, although the video only says that you'll be able to place blocks further, it wouldn't make sense that you could place blocks, but then you wouldn't be able to break them. Let's say you accidentally misplace it. Also, in creative mode, you have a slightly further reach than in survival. Notice I can reach all the way to this tree, but when I go into survival, I can't actually place blocks up against that. So how much the increase of the actual reach distance is actually going to make a big difference on how useful this is going to be. Enjoying this free video? Give it a free like! And like most other tools, when you actually use them, it takes up durability. But if this crab claw is just sitting in your offhand, it's unlikely for it to actually take durability. So having a farther reach would actually have quite a bit of use. Such as when you're mining with a beacon in a large area, you often will reach the limit in which a player can actually reach out and break blocks pretty quickly because you're instant mining all the blocks. So by being able to reach out a little bit further, you just don't have to move around as much. This could be useful in the overworld where you're looking for diamonds while strip mining, or if you're in the nether dimension looking for ancient debris. You can expose more blocks just with a single pass. Now though they advertise this for builders being able to place blocks further in their builds, this actually has a huge impact on technical players, such as like my automatic mangrove tree farm. When it comes to actually planting in the sapling in here, I have the player actually sitting way down here. That way the player is far enough away so that the TNT that blow up the tree aren't close enough so that the explosions also hurt the player and would kill them over time. But we can only put the player so far away, otherwise the player can't actually reach in order to place in the sapling. So by having a further reach, we can have more options and where we can actually place the player and therefore we can actually redesign the entire farm around these restrictions. This would also apply to other tree farms, but it could also apply to places where you're trying to gather blocks, such as like my automatic leaf farm. This one here is for the cherry tree, works with the player riding in a minecart, they would have a hoe, and then they would silk touch all the leaves in front of them. But they can only silk touch out as far as the player can reach, and by reaching out further, we can actually remove more leaves, making this farm more productive. Other types of collection farms, such as my silk touching grass farm, you're limited by how far the player can reach, especially when they're inside of a minecart, because the minecart will reduce their reach by one block. So even though the bone mill can put grass further away, we just can't use it normally. What other ways could this be used? But there might be a good reason why they have it so the player can only place in blocks farther away but not be able to break them. Because if you could break blocks, because then you could probably also reach out further and hit mobs. Now I don't really see this being a problem since after you acquire this claw, it's probably a nice little reward that you can reach out a bit further to hit things. And once you start thinking about it, you notice there is a lot of farms that could be improved by having a further reach, like my super fast vine farm, silk touch amethyst farm, fly machines that quarry away blocks, but instead use the player to actually break the blocks in front of them, my automatic big triply farm, harvesting hanging roots, placing in blocks that need to get converted, like in my copper farm that automatically waxes them, as well as automatically oxidizes them and stores them away as item form. You could also use this to collect powder snow more efficiently, as well as lava buckets. Now I'm placing blocks to use the right click button or the use option, but this is also used in order to reach chests. So that means you could reach different things further away than you normally can. So you could potentially actually have a storage system with chests further away, yet you could still reach them and access the stuff within. Now if the crab claw sits in the offhand, they might have did this on purpose so that it doesn't allow players to also hold like the totem of undying. That way if you want to have the perks of this extra reach, you have to give up something else like your shields or even your torches. If the item itself only has to be within inside your inventory for it to work, then it might be considered too overpowered and also might not seem very minecrafty as it somehow is taking effect without being held in the hands or on the body. Where do you think you have to hold it in order to get the effect? They also mentioned that you can find these crabs in the mangrove swamps, which is very typical of real life where there is a lot of crabs in these type of biomes. When they also talk about the claw, they just show the individual claw floating on top of the water. 
and they mention you have to find this claw. So it's unlikely they have to actually kill the crab in order to get the claw, but instead they're probably going to drop similar to like a chicken which lays eggs every 5 minutes, maybe they will drop a claw every 5 minutes. You can easily make a farm using this by having some crabs and just waiting for them to drop a claw, although it does seem like you really wouldn't need any more than one of these items. This is awesome! To Minecraft Live! Do you want the crab to become Minecraft's new mob? Voting opens on October 13th at 1 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, and you'll have 48 hours to cast your vote. Besides the video, they also came out with a Minecraft article, which shows the crab up close with its really big claw. And it talks about how the first mob that can be voted on is the crab, where I mentioned some of the similar things as in the video. But it does reiterate that if the player manages to find one, so it's unlikely they actually have to kill a crab in order to get one. Then it continues on explaining how the boating is going to start 48 hours before the Minecraft live event, so between October 13th and 15th. So it seems that the leak was correct, that means we're also going to be getting the jellyfish next, and then the seagull for the third mob. Hopefully they also have some cool uses, maybe the jellyfish will have a new type of slime block that is pink. It doesn't connect with the other honey and other slime, which will let you do even more stuff. And the seagull will probably have some type of effect kind of similar to like the lay where it'll be able to fly around and maybe grab blocks or grab something and bring it back to the player. Jellyfish and the seagull definitely have to have some pretty cool uses. Otherwise, they're just not going to compare to the crab, which definitely is going to have a useful item. What do you think the jellyfish and the seagull are going to offer for their special perk? Continue to check out my channel as they will be putting out the next two mobs for a total of three of them over the next couple days. Be prepared for the next Minecraft update by building these simple farms using this playlist. Or check out my Patreon to see all the cool perks I offer to all my supporters, including getting to play with me and even having your name at the end of the video. I will see you all in the next mod vote video. Thank you for watching and bye bye!